Breaking news, Canon leaked the flagship R1 for reals this time. I think we have the actual real specs. Sony leaked a new camera coming out soon and there's some new lighting stuff. Also, I had a birthday. Can you guess which one in the comments down below? Let me know what you think. First, I wanna thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is where you start when you want any kind of presence on the web. You might think, oh, I'll just go to social media and set something up. Social media is owned by somebody else. Somebody else is making a profit from social media. It's not meant to make you look good. It's meant to keep people scrolling. They'll literally show your competitors at the bottom of the page. Start at squarespace.com slash Tony. You can set up a website that is exactly what you need to make your work look beautiful. Create a store, sell products, take appointments from clients, view detailed analytics. They'll start you with a free trial so you can see how everything works. No credit card required. And if you love it, the coupon code Tony will save you 10% when you decide to sign up. Thank you very much, Squarespace. First, Tony and Chelsea Live is back if you didn't notice. We're back to reviewing your photos, your real photos in real time every Thursday at five o'clock Eastern time. This next video is going to be for people and portraits. So if you're interested in that, go to stp.io slash submit. You can send your picture in now and then watch the video live. Also in lighting news, Flashpoint, which is the American Adorama version of the Godox brand, just launched a new on-camera trigger for your studios or for your flashes when you're working off camera. And it has a beautiful interface like this looks almost like one of those much more expensive pro photo triggers and it's nice and small so i pre-ordered two of them one for my sony cameras and one for nikon which also works with hasselblad so as soon as i get those in we'll have a full review also flashpoint launched a bizarre but cool new flash which is their new round head flash magnetic system where you can snap stuff on but it has a second flash on the face of the flash so you could bounce the light up and still f use fill light in the foreground. I think that's a really cool advancement. It's been a while since we saw something interesting in the flash world. Now for some Sony rumors. Sony Alpha Rumors is once again saying that Sony is going to launch an 85 millimeter GM2, which we've also been predicting for more than a year now because their original 85 millimeter GM is it's kind of an old lens. It's not their best lens. It was one of their first. It desperately needs a refresh and it's coming in spring, apparently. Their rumor wasn't sure if it was an f1.4 or faster lens. So Canon and Nikon have 85 f1.2 lenses. It would make a lot of sense if Sony at least matched that, but maybe they'll even go faster and go f1.1. Will it be one of those two? Or maybe it will be both and we'll see a dual launch of 85 millimeters at different speeds. That would be ideal. That comes from Sony Alpha Rumors. Thanks, I appreciate the work that you do. Sony Alpha Rumors is also saying that there's going to soon be a ZV E10 Mark II. The ZV series of cameras is Sony's E mount cameras that are video centric. So they don't have a viewfinder. They're for creators like myself who frequently film yourself or film somebody else. The ZV E10, the original, it's one of the best selling cameras in the world because it's inexpensive and yet very capable. Supposedly, this has the higher megapixel Sony A6700 sensor. And it will have some AI features, of course, because <laughs> that is the buzzword. AI is being crammed into everything. I think some of it might even be programmatic, but nonetheless, it'll help sell stuff. And the price is going to be about 900 bucks. That should be coming in spring. All right, all right. I know what you're all waiting for, the Canon R1 specs. These are so accurate that Canon rumors said they're pretty close to reality, according to a solid source. So let's check them out. First of all, of course, there's better autofocus because every new camera is announced with better autofocus, but I do believe it because that's going to be a top priority for Canon. They're also supposedly using AI to improve the auto exposure. I'm guessing this means that we'll use AI subject recognition to find the subject's face and make sure that the face is exposed properly regardless of the skin tone, for example. I'm hoping it also extends to wildlife photography. Like right now, if you are taking pictures of a white bird, auto exposure on every camera will pretty much overexpose it a little. If it's a dark bird, it'll underexpose it a little. I just want them to use that subject detection to adjust the auto exposure and perhaps that's doing it. Here's the controversial part, the part that is kind of disappointing. The sensor, it's a 30 megapixel full frame sensor, not a global shutter, it is a stacked sensor, which means it still has a rolling shutter. It still reads out from the top of the picture to the bottom of the picture, which means depending on 
the lighting, you could get some banding. It means you do not have an unlimited sync speed. But one benefit of this is that it's a dual gain sensor. That means at high ISOs, it will switch into a high ISO mode and reduce noise. This is all relative to other cameras, right? I thought the R1 was going to be Canon's answer to the Sony Alpha 1, the Nikon Z8, the Nikon Z9. Those have 50 or 45 megapixel sensors and are capable of shooting full width 30 frames per second. They've been available for years and Canon still doesn't have an answer for that and apparently the R1 is not going to be that. But high frame rate, high megapixel, that's something wildlife photographers like myself need. It's not something sports photographers really need. And this is made specifically for the upcoming Olympics. So maybe this is a sports centric camera and Canon still has another R5 or some other high megapixel camera that they will give to those of us Canon wildlife photographers that are eagerly awaiting something new. There are some real benefits to it though. It's not a global shutter. It does not have an unlimited sync speed. It does not have instant readout, but the sync speed is supposedly 1 1250th of a second, which is exceptionally fast. For example, my Z9 with my lights syncs at about 1 1 60th of a second because it doesn't have a mechanical shutter. Even my A1, which seems to have the fastest mechanical shutter in the world, syncs at 1 400th of a second. That means it's behind only the Sony A9 Mark III with its technically a 1 80,000th of a second sync speed or my Hasselblad leaf shutter system, which will sync up to 1 4,000th of a second. So it's, it's exceptionally fast. This points to a 0 0.8 millisecond readout speed. Now Canon rumors wrote microsecond readout speed, but I'm pretty confident that is a typo. If we assume it's milliseconds, that means the readout speed is about five times faster than the Sony A1 or the Nikon Z8, Z9. Now it has a lower megapixel, so you would assume it would be mm, like 40% faster, but 500% faster is a significant leap. And that means that Canon has made a technological advancement that they should be really proud of. This super fast readout speed will give you most of the benefits of a global shutter, except in like the most narrow of corner cases without the drawbacks. It should have not just as good dynamic range, but better dynamic range, better dynamic range than the Canon R3 and R5. Whereas the Sony A9 Mark III with its global shutter, we found it had significantly worse dynamic range. Not that anybody's gonna notice, not that in typical sports photography uses you're ever going to care, but it is interesting to see Canon making a different strategic decision than Sony. Rather than chasing a perfect readout speed and compromising high ISO noise and low end dynamic range, they compromised the readout speed a little bit, but kept the image quality up. I think we're splitting hairs and real world photos won't make any difference, but subscribe. And as soon as we can get our hands on an R1, we will publish a review. This camera will shoot 120 frames per second raw. That matches the Sony A9 Mark III at 24 frames per second. So because it's got 30 frames per second, it actually has more throughput and that kind of indicates that Canon is ahead in at least that one way. The Nikon Z8 and Z9, they also do 120 frames per second, but it's with JPEG files and they're only 11 megapixels. At the same time, shooting the Z8, Z9 alongside the Sony A9 Mark III, I found those images to be just fine, totally acceptable and didn't leave me wanting more megapixels for sports scenarios. Now wildlife scenarios, all the megapixels matter. It will also do a 240 frames per second burst mode. And I suspect this burst mode is the same that we see in the R3 where you press the shutter once and it just records 240 frames per second for about a second or so. But after you push the shutter, you can't really do anything. Like on the R3, the viewfinder locks up, you can't track your subject. And that means for most sports scenarios, it's kind of useless, but you could use it if you were photographing a batter and you wanted to really get that moment when the ball hit the bat. Like all these flagships, it'll have pre-shooting where you press the shutter and it goes back in time for up to a full second. I shouldn't say all the flagships because the Sony A1 still lacks that, but the Z8, Z9, A9 Mark III have it. Let's talk video. 6.2K at 60 frames per second or 4.2K at 120 frames per second. This is 12-bit cinema raw. I'm a little unclear on the translated specs, but I think this is only going to be available with a 1.5 times mode, but maybe the 6.7K 60 frames per second raw is full width. You can get either full width or APS-C 4K at up to 120 frames per second. That's very fast. That suits everybody's needs and it should be available in C-Log 2 and C-Log 3 for those of you who need the extra dynamic range, more detail in highlights and shadows. 
an interesting rumored spec. It will have in-camera depth of field stacking raw. This means that if you're doing a macro shot, for example, it will focus on the closest part of the subject and the depth of field be, will be so shallow, only a small part will be in focus. And then it will rack focus back a little bit and take another shot, rack focus back a little bit, take another shot, and then stack these images together to produce an image. Right now we do that manually and then process everything in Photoshop. It'd be super convenient to get that to work in camera. I'm skeptical, like these complex software processing in camera things, I've never found them to work well. I don't blame Canon because Sony, Panasonic, Nikon, Olympus, they've all tried this at different times and none of it has worked well because modern cameras have very primitive operating systems. It tends to be really difficult to write good code and it usually just works better to pull it onto your computer. The translated specs also say it will have maximum hand feel, which I guess just means it's going to be a slightly redesigned grip that feels a little bit better. I'm excited for it. I can't wait to try it. I am actually glad about the choice that Canon made to choose a fast rolling shutter as opposed to making the compromises that go alongside with a global shutter. But I'm still disappointed with some things. I know only I could be disappointed with something that does not yet exist. I'm still awaiting Canon's answer to the A1 and the Z8, Z9. I want a high megapixel, high frame rate camera for my wildlife photography because you guys have some of the best glass out there. But Canon, you're now several years behind Sony and Nikon. And we still just seem to be chasing specs. It's always just higher frame rates. And I complained about the same thing with the Sony A9 Mark III. You, you did it. You have all the frame rates, all the megapixels. Let's start thinking about usability, security. There's so many other things you could focus on other than just chasing frames per second. You've got more frames per second than the vast majority of your users will ever, ever care about. So how about you get us some encryption? Because professional users are often shooting things that are confidential or embargoed. And if somebody steals their camera, the thief also gets access to all of those files and that makes the photographer or the company potential victims of extortion, right? Also, the gear can be stolen and just freely sold at any pawn shop because they don't have any anti-theft measures. You could just provide some sort of authentication that would block a stolen camera. Similar features in smartphones and cars drastically reduce the amount of theft and thus reduce the amount of people being targeted by crime. We need some help introducing these features into cameras too because I'm tired of photographers being robbed and I want to see some advancements in those fields and not just more frames per second. The list goes on. Like, I, how about you make a screen I can actually see in full sunlight? How about you give me wireless transfers that are actually quick and stable and reliable and can go to a variety of different destinations instead of just an FTP server? I, I need cellular so I can upload pictures in the, there's a lot that I want. Now that you've got to 120 frames per second, I hope you don't just keep adding more and more frames per second to it. In the comments down below, tell me, are you excited about the new R1 specs or are they a disappointment? Is Canon behind or are they still the technology leader. I'll tell you who leads technology in web hosting and that's Squarespace. And this is coming from a guy who specialized in web hosting as the internet was being built. That, believe it or not, that was my job for a long time. And I switched my stuff over to Squarespace because I don't want to be the IT guy. I don't want to be the nerd anymore. But Squarespace has amazing designers. So many systems administrators keeping everything running smooth and fast, doing all the testing that you need to make sure that your website runs perfectly on computers, tablets, smartphones, TVs, wherever people might view your stuff. You need it to look beautiful. Squarespace designers have taken care of that for you. You can try it out completely free. Check out their different templates, put your pictures in, tell them about you and your business or your personal project at squarespace.com slash Tony. When you love it, the coupon code Tony will get you 10% off. Thanks for sponsoring us, Squarespace. Don't forget to subscribe to see our upcoming review of the Canon R1. Bye.